Hey, it's your girl BMF Goddess. I want to apologize ahead of time because the audio does not match the video. I had some technical issues. But here it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I have the pleasure of having a sit down with the superstar Whiplash. He's going to be answering some questions about his career and life. Thank you for tuning in. Whiplash, how are you? Very, very good. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, how, um, how's life been treating you since this whole COVID era, and how has it affected you know uh, COVID, wrestling? COVID has killed everything. I'm used to wrestling like you know maybe twice a month if I'm lucky, but this COVID has killed everything, man. Everything, work, wrestling, my whole life. How has it made wrestling different? Besides um, being hard to book. Everything is different. We can't travel. We can't have a crowd. We can't do anything. Like, oh, my God. To, in order to wrestle, you got to get tested and shit. It's like... It's a lot. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. And like you said, no crowds really. Um, I know as a fan watching wrestling myself, I can't stand that there are no crowds. Even with the fake cheers and chants how is that for a wrestler um in the wrestler's viewpoint um it kills pretty much your whole mood like we base our whole thing off of the adrenaline that we get from the crowd the rush from the crowd right and if there's nobody there then you're just going through the motions it's like it's boring it's nothing to do <laughs> feels like i'm feels like i'm training again yeah okay now nah, i could definitely understand that I know, um, I wanted to ask, was, was your, was wrestling your first passion in life? And if not, what was? Um, I actually know when I was younger, when I was in school and stuff like that, I used to play basketball a lot and I was pretty good at basketball until I met my partner. Balling. Word. We just like, you know, <laughs> got cool. And then he was really, really, really into wrestling. And I was kind of into wrestling, but not as much as he was. And then he introduced me to backyard wrestling, which was another crazy part of life. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys are even infamous for being backyarders. Yeah. You guys are too good. Now, I'm aware you've had a rough upbringing. How has that influenced your choice to be a wrestler? And how has it affected it? your life after wrestling school and following that dream? Um, having a rough upbringing helped with a lot of stuff because it like gives you a thick skin, you know what I mean? It gives you like, it helps with my I really don't give a fuck attitude, so. Absolutely. It wasn't fun going through it, but it helped with the, the way you have to be to be successful in wrestling. It helped you, uh, Basically, it's like an armor. Yes, very <clears throat> much. If you could describe yourself in three words, what would they be? Oh, shit. I forgot this one. Huh. <laughs> uh, I think one was awesome. Um, I'm a party. <laughs> a party boy. One. I am. <laughs> Does uh, party boy translate to fuck boy? Nah, nah. She's trying to get me in trouble again, man. No. No, I'm not into that. Um, I don't know. I guess smart. I'm not dumb, uh, so. I could concur. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up for you? Um, Growing up was... Not that fun for me. Uh, I got a lot of siblings. I'm the oldest of seven. So my mom separated from my dad when I was maybe like three or four. So when she got remarried, it was just like she had mad kids after that. So it was just like, eh, it's not fun. A lot of babysitting, having to take care of kids and shit. Can't really go outside because you got to be inside with the kids. Doing a lot of growing and then up my too mom fast. didn't make a lot of good decisions in life, so it was like we moved a lot, so it wasn't really anywhere stable. 
Yeah. I always had to switch schools. Wasn't really so many, I would say, like, best friends type shit. Right. So, yeah. Okay. What would... um. What would you say it takes to be successful in the in the wrestling business? And by that, I mean not just mainstream, but more to make an impression and have people remember what you've done. Um, carry yourself the right way. Like, be professional. Don't be too much of an asshole, but be enough of an asshole that nobody tries to take advantage of you. Yeah. Um... And just, you know, be good at what you do. Don't <clears throat> sell yourself short. You know, look at every match that you have. Like, it's your last match. Put it all out there. Yeah. The way I see it is, like, uh, basically, give it your fucking all or you don't belong there. Hell yes. <clears throat> I agree. What is something about the business that you absolutely hate or a pet peeve? Oh, um, wrestlers that like to talk shit <laughs> like children. High school again. Yes, very much. And I kind of don't like when fans try to be a part of the act too much. Right. Like, yeah. I, I appreciate the fans, don't get me wrong, without fans. Yeah, like, yeah. We're in no, the COVID, but there's so. like a... But fans try lying. to do a little too much. Sometimes. Right. I understand that. You hear that, fans? Yeah. Like, Relax. stay in your lane, okay? We want you in the fan lane to enjoy the fun, not be a part of it. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> um, you and your partner are known for having an aggressive attitude and are very non conforming approach you guys like to stand on your own have you ever thought about being a super face like the complete opposite of a heel <laughs> hell no <laughs> why is that i mean my favorite parts about wrestling is i like being a heel because being a heel you can do whatever you want yeah basically what you want to do is get yourself over and get your opponent over while doing whatever you got to do so, if I'm a face and all I could do is yay and fucking cheer me and all of that shit, that shit's not fun for me. <laughs> I like, like my idols are like, you know, my favorite wrestler is Steve Austin. So, if you look at him as a heel. That's my at, idol, guys. <laughs> if you look at him as a heel, <laughs> he does all kind of craziness. Does whatever he has to do to get you to hate him. There was a very short time that Austin was in the alliance you remember that awesome and he was the super face and i hated it but he was so great at it so it was like i loved it at the same time but mm -hmm. seeing that he's able to do that is awesome but i love austin as a heel mm -hmm. and i still respect him you know being the super face but definitely uh prefer him to be kicking vince's ass See, but I like the fact that Steve Austin, like, he doesn't do super face shit, like, scream to the fans, try to get them to cheer him. <laughs> he just does whatever he's going to do, and yeah. they like him for just for that. So that's really what I'd go for. Like, usually when I go to a, uh, when I debut somewhere, me and my partner, we usually heels. And it doesn't take too long for the fans to just turn it off for themselves, and we just turn face. You can't just, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I see. <clears throat> How was it working for the Samoans? And by Samoans, you have to specify for the people who don't know. <laughs> um, in Allentown, Pennsylvania, uh, Samu Anawai of the Head Shrinkers runs a wrestling school, and he holds, and he's the owner of. WXWC4, where me and my partner went and held the tag team titles for 581 days. Fucking and, God, like. And just, they taught us so much stuff about everything about wrestling. From doing promos, the way that's supposed to go, working in front of a television, like, with different cameras, and how to sell to just one camera, how to go to one thing, and 
Just the way they run their whole operation is just... So it sounds like it was a very prestigious, enlightening time Hell for yes. you guys. Some of my most fun time in wrestling. And you guys were like super over. Like they love the Zoltan. Hell yeah. And you know, Fear the Goat, they would chant Goat. Mm -hmm. They love them over there. For real. What was something you still want to achieve before you do retire? Um... I want to be a, I want to go international. I don't just want to be, well, right now, just, I'm infamous on the East Coast only. Yeah, you want to travel. So, I want to go different places. I want to go really to Japan. That's really what I'm a fan of. Yeah. And when I started wrestling, I was trained to do mostly Lucha Libre style. So, I would like to go to Mexico also. Awesome. Yes, definitely. Because you are actually... A new and luchador el specialist. Yeah, Have you ever had any embarrassing moments in the ring or any big botches? <laughs> yeah, the spear, man. I'm telling you, it was the worst. You took a spear? Or no, you I used you to do uh, kind of like a springboard spear, but I would twist my body to face inside the ring so I could hit somebody with a spear. But... When I went for it one time, my foot hooked the rope and I fell out of the ring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and if it wasn't for my partner being there to hold me up to get me my leg out of the rope, I probably would have been there for a little while. Oh, man. That was pretty cool. You have that on video? I wish. <laughs> I would post Yeah, that would be pretty funny. Was wrestling an escape or therapy from life? Yes, wrestling still is an escape. <laughs> and therapy because any stress I go through in real life at work at if I'm dealing in a relationship and that's going the wrong way or whatever it is yeah I look at wrestling as my out to everything your outlet if I'm stressed yeah. out I get to go I get paid to hit somebody in the face it all leaves it's, in that cir in amazing. that square circle yeah. but then at the same time <laughs> it's like if I'm stressed out if I'm going through some shit in my real life I appreciate it also because now I get to get hit too. Like, I don't want to just hit people. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's understandable. It's like me. And, like, when I'm stressed, I love to go get a tattoo because there it is. it's a form of pain that is kind of controlled, you know, that yep. it's kind of like the pain leaving your body. <laughs> mm -hmm. What would you say are your weaknesses or things you can improve on? promos i suck at talking shit well that's not true <laughs> when i'm in front of a camera i suck at talking shit if yeah. i'm just talking shit in my real life then i'm kind of good at it people should like oh, give yeah. me like a candid camera and just <laughs> bam i got him promo guys but yeah when it's time to you know turn it on it's like i go blank and it's not fun He's not lying, guys. I've known Whiplash for a couple of years, and it's definitely yeah. true. But I have to say, when your latest stuff is definitely, I can see improving. So well, that's because just keep at it. My partner has like <laughs> the best promo on fucking independent circuit right now, and you know I can't just stand there and just be like, "Hey, true, true." I'm here, <laughs> so you know he inspires me in promos and stuff. So it's good. Did your, did your. All right, you said this. Your upbringing did influence who you are in the ring. Most definitely. <clears throat> but it's good because, you know, some people falter with that type of, you know, turbulence going on in life mm -hmm. as where you turned it into something powerful. Did you, do you still get nervous before a match? Like, how do you handle that pressure, especially for matches that are very important? Um... But I've been wrestling for a long time, and when I first started, every every single match, I would be nervous. <laughs> but okay. if now I'm more, I mean, I still get nervous, yes, but I don't know. I smoke a lot of pot, so I, that keeps me calm while I'm, you know, getting ready to do my thing. It's definitely good for the nerves. <laughs> and like, I, but if it's a big match, then yes, I'm very nervous. Like the Rock and Roll Express match we got coming up. So, yeah. Mm, okay. 
We're going to get to that. What is your favorite match to date? Tag team and singles. Tag team would have to be... I would have to say the dog collar match. Because that was like a big build up to that match. And it was actually like it meant something. We were getting back our stolen tag team titles. And that was just... It was a good match. Yeah. Okay. Really yeah. physical. It was awesome. The cage match, right? The still cage and match? And the cage match was another one. <clears throat> the cage match was a lot of fun. And you jumped from the top of the cage. It was pretty epic. Hell yes. Um, I wish I did something more crazy, though. Tell us about that match. Um, Let the people know which match this was. Where did it take place? The, the cage? Yeah. That was for WXWC4 in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And um, we were in a three-way tag match. It was uh, us, the Zoltan, versus Samuel Adams and Lobo, versus Bad Intentions. I don't remember like, their individual names, but yeah, that was a three-way tag, and it was pretty cool. Sweet. Um, we got attacked before we even got into the cage. <laughs> So the they only were way to ready. get in was to climb over and jump off. So I did it. Awesome, awesome. I got to add a clip to this. Yeah, that's <clears throat> awesome. What or when was the exact moment you know this is what you wanted to do? Um, I don't remember the exact moment, but I know... When I started to do backyard wrestling, I noticed how uh, like big crowds would just come and watch us. And we didn't even know what we were doing at the time. And we would still be able to hold the crowd and, you know, make people scream and have different kind of emotions and things like that. So it was just like, yeah, we should really try this. And when we went to wrestling school or anywhere else we went to. Uh, we were always the standouts, so we knew that we could make it if we just wanted it enough. And here we are. Yeah, like you guys like used to draw serious crowds to the parks. In a park. In all weather. Yep. And police used to come all the way. It was a, like a weekly thing, right? Yeah. And exactly. people used to dead come and watch you guys and enjoy <laughs> it. And it yeah. was like the talk of... The borough. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty godlike, man. Yeah, that was cool. What is the worst injury you suffered? What was the story? What happened? Oh, man. I get hurt a lot. Like, I, I dislocated things, broke things, all kind of stuff. But my leg, I would have to say, is the worst. Um, I was teaching someone how to do a baseball slide. This happened during training. And I was teaching someone how to do a baseball slide. And while teaching them this, my foot caught the canvas. And as I was sliding forward, my leg rolled under me. Ugh. So <laughs> I broke my leg in maybe five places, dislocated my ankle. Oh, my God. And tore everything in my ankle. Guys, this is like several times I've heard this story and it still hurts me every time. Yeah, so now I got a metal plate. Maybe 14 screws. And I got really no motion. Like I can't bend my foot up or down. And he is still wrestling, guys. Full throttle. Hell yeah. I wrestled with a cast on. <laughs> he didn't but, even completely heal, guys. No. And he was in there. I didn't do any physical therapy. Talk either. about um, Daredevil. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Let's get a little personal for the lady fans. They want to know, are you single? And what do you look for in a female counterpart? Okay. Yes, I'm single. Um, I look for someone that can make me laugh. Um, I don't, I'm not into skinny women. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't mean I'm into obese women, but I'm not into skinny women. Um, you got to be biteable. Yes. <laughs> um, and I don't know how many people might not like this or not, but I really look for a pretty face. Aw, okay. I don't care really about if you wear glasses or 
Whatever, that doesn't bother me, but... Well, no, race doesn't matter, none oh, no, of that. I'm, a, I'm not racist at How all. How about intelligence? Do you like dumb bitches or smart Hell. ones? <laughs> <laughs> Can they be dumb and pretty? Um. All right, <laughs> dumb girls are fun in the beginning. Until you realize that they dumb or realize how dumb they are. And then it's like, eh. It's like is, you need some more course. substance because that's what I keep hearing from guys. Yes. <laughs> it's not all right. All right. A long time. Mm. How would you talk? How would you talk someone who doesn't watch or know about wrestling into liking it and go? Um, I would ask them how big of a fan of movies they are. And ask them if they would like to watch a live action movie. Because I look at wrestling not more not so much as a as a like a fake sport or anything like that. It's more a performance. It's some people call it art. I call it a live action stunt show. You got two people fighting right in front of you and they're gonna do everything that they can to hurt each other. As you would see in a movie. Right. Okay. Hmm. I think that's a good preview. What is the common misconception about pro wrestling? Same question about yourself. Oh shit. Um <laughs> misconception about myself is that I'm a young guy. <laughs> I just look young. He looks super young. <laughs> I just got good genes, that's all that is. I'm old as hell. Um and misconception about wrestling is that it's gay. <laughs> Sorry, not that there's anything wrong with that. Well, people say that in a derogatory but, manner, like, okay, yeah, wrestling like is gay, like, it. oh, it's 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 whack. In other words, but I don't know. People, a lot of people, anybody that I know, like my personal friends, oh, you still do wrestling? You still hugging up on men in their underwears? So it's like yeah. <laughs> exactly, a lot of just look ignorant, at it like it's gay. stupid shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm aware that you've trained some of the younger guys in our area. Has there ever been a time that you had to tell a student that wrestling wasn't for them? How was that experience? Um, again, this goes back to my the way I came up in life. Like, you know, you got to not give a fuck about certain things. And if it's a way somebody's going to feel, then you the just true can't hurts, give a fuck, right? you know what I mean? <laughs> So, not everything is for everybody. Like, I could like things. But it's just not for everybody. To do, yeah. And I've come across a few kids, young kids, older kids, men even, that just looking at them try to do what we do. See how <laughs> scared they are. Just the way they can't. Some people just can't physically do the stuff that we do. And it's... Yeah, because... It, like, it's kind of hard to tell somebody, like, I'm going to crush your dreams right now, but at the same time, you, you just got to do what you got to do. And this Otherwise, they'll you. keep going and yeah. just get nowhere. Because on I, I do feel like for a wrestler, for to be a, a overall great wrestler, you got to check all the boxes. It's not just your skill. It's not just your promos. It's not just your mm -hmm. look. It's the complete package. And honestly, if you don't have that, I don't see... Or you're not working towards being that, I don't see why you're, why you're in this field. If you don't, like you said, check all the boxes, it's like you're probably going to find yourself stuck in the same place for a long period of time. Yeah. Getting around and going to different places and traveling to different places, learning different styles, meeting different people. That's what makes you diverse, I guess. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's always good. What's your craziest road story? <laughs> you know what? I'm stealing Sammy's story. <laughs> uh -huh. That trip to PA was crazy. First, we got I'm lost. Tell it better. We got, I am going to tell you better. Because I remember it. That's why. That, we got lost going and coming. Um, <laughs> going and coming? Yes, we got she lost going over there and coming home. Terrible. Um, going over there, 
we were the entire van. First, we had like a big ass church van. <laughs> then there was maybe 14 people in it. Oh my God. And everybody was stoned out, right? So, I mean, Madre. It's, yeah. It was like the Scooby Doo van. Yes. <laughs> We get there mm. after being lost. It took. We went to Pennsylvania. It took us six hours. Holy shit! So we get there, <laughs> wrestle, get back in the car to come home, drunk the entire way. Oh my gosh! We wrestled in a gas station. <laughs> um, we bought fireworks on the side of the road. You parked the cars and threw the fireworks in the air. Some of them went under the cars. It was crazy. Um, Imagine this picture, a bunch of drunk pro wrestlers yes. uh, setting off fireworks. Then uh, we stopped in a gas station because we were lost. And they told the, we told the lady in the gas station that we were trying to get to New York City. And she said, well, if you keep going the direction you're going, in about 25 minutes, you're going to be in Canada. <laughs> so oh my God. we had to turn around and come back. Hence that the six-hour drive. I know the comeback was ten hours because we almost went to Canada. Oh my, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, I was drinking. A lot <laughs> of shit. When I got shit. out of the car, I had on a motorcycle jacket and no shirt. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a fun night. It was Crazy. Wild. <laughs> Every, everyone, um, everyone knows you have possibly no. I would say. One of the best versions of the stunner in the business, the whippersnapper. Hey. How did this come to be? Um, well, again, being a fan of Steve Austin. And what some people don't know, I was a giant, giant ECW fan back in the day. And I was a big fan of Mikey Whipwreck. Yes. Who used to also do the stunner, but he called it the whippersnapper, which is why I called it the whippersnapper. Awesome. And I was just a big fan of the move. It just looks cool. It's easy to do. I can do it to anybody. I don't have to. If it's a big guy, I don't got to worry about it. I can't pick him up or something. It's just, just looks cool. And on some real shit, as easy as it is to do, not many can execute it well. Um, Very true. For example, uh, our man KO. Terrible. I like him as a wrestler, but I hate that he does the stunner now. Disgraceful. <laughs> and the fact that Steve Austin co-signed it really bothers me. It, me too. <laughs> I don't know if he's trying to be a good guy or what, man. But it really pisses me off. <laughs> yeah, that shit is not true. <laughs> what are your retirement goals? Do you have any idea when you want to hang it up? Um, or any plans for after? <laughs> well, when I started wrestling, I gave myself... I told myself, if I'm not somewhere big or meaningful by the time I'm 35, then that's it. I don't want to be one of those guys that's 40 years old and never went nowhere. And you just hold it on to a dream just because. Okay, yeah. But now that I'm 36, and no, I haven't been anywhere that that big, but the last maybe two, three years for me and my partner have been pretty crazy. So, I just want to see where it goes right now. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to give myself a number really. Yeah. But I know if I have another serious injury, that might do it to me also. So, you know when you know. Yeah. No time soon. Though. Do you think that, like, when you do retire, that you would be interested in being a teacher or commentator or producer or writer something um still involved in the business um i actually was i did work in a wrestling school for a little while yeah and um i'm pretty good at teaching people you just need a lot of patience you're right <laughs> like, people don't understand certain things or how you're supposed to do things or why you're supposed to do things so Especially if I'm already retired, then I have a lot of patience for that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke some pot, teach some people how to wrestle. It should be fun. If we... <laughs> um, about the commentating thing, probably. Not. I mean, I would actually be a funny Spanish commentator. 
<laughs> Why? <clears throat> because I don't know much Spanish. So, <laughs> it'll be tremendous to listen to it. Oh my gosh, I can't with you. <laughs> if you could rewind time, is there anything professionally or personally you would do different? Um, I would handle a personal situation that I went through early on in wrestling school. I would handle that a lot differently. And I think if I would have handled that differently, my early career would have went differently. So it's like I kind of regret what I what happened. Yeah. But at the same time, if that didn't happen, it wouldn't have threw me into what I did. Right. So it's so like it's, a two-edged sword. Yeah. And if my Unagi is working, I would think we talking about a certain separation for a yeah. couple of years. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> if a mainstream company were to call you, which one would you prefer to be? Well, being a fan of old school wrestling, NWA was a big, like me and my partner really wanted to get into NWA. And I don't know, like this COVID shit again. NWA I think it is awesome. NWA. Love them. But um, I would have to go Impact Wrestling because they're like kind of at the bottom of the television spectrum, yeah. <laughs> like the televised wrestling companies. They're at the bottom of the poles right now. And <clears throat> they look like, you know, somewhere that somebody wants to make a name for themselves and make all the other companies have their eyes on them. Yeah, I think me and my partner would make a big name for ourselves there. And that would just open a lot of doors for us. Absolutely. (laughs) That makes a lot of sense, actually. Kind of a resurgence for them. Yeah. Okay. What mainstream wrestler would you say you'd whip his ass? (laughs) Who you would call out, just be like, "I I know for sure I'll whip you. (laughs) <laughs> Bitch. No. <laughs> uh, John Moxley. No, sorry. Well, him too, yes. Him too, yes. yes. Moxley's yes. my dude. He sucks ass. But <laughs> Joey Janela too. So, oh, okay. I agree with you on that one. Let's I go ham on this one. the shit out of Joey Janela. Let's talk about friends in the business. Oh. Uh, I believe that to be the only reason why he's there. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Well, that's another reason why people become successful in wrestling. Yeah. If you got friends in the right places, depending on how good a friend they are, they will plug you right in, and you anybody that's watching you would think you're hot shit, but it's just because you know the right person. Oh, and for those unaware, those are the, <laughs> the ones you can't stand because they really fucking suck, and they're just there because they had... They had those plugins. Exactly. <laughs> what about who would you never wrestle? Like, just don't even ask me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that one I can say, John Moxley. <laughs> Why? Because I'm not a fan. I don't like him. Why? You have to explain this to me. He's terrible. I look at him. What about him is terrible? I look at him like John Cena. Like I look at the Rock. Nah. You just get on the mic, bro. Nah. Once you get in the ring, it's terrible after that. It's like the Ultimate Warrior. Think he's a shit wrestler? Once the entrance is over, it's over. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) I don't think he's terrible. Like that. Why you think he does hardcore wrestling? Because he can't wrestle. Yeah, I think I think he's 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 just he's built for that. Yeah. Um, as the member of the badass goat, what would you say is the worst faction today, and what about the best? The worst faction today. Well, what? How many factions are there really? Today. Not many, but I could say, for my opinion, the Dark Order. I can't stand it. Go away. Well, I, I kind of, I know 
some of the Dark Order personally. Like I'm friends with the Dark Order. I don't Order. like I don't like what they're doing with the Dark Order. <coughs> Let me put it that way. Um I think it's cornballs. Least favorite. Let me see. I will have to go Jurassic Express. <laughs> Why? Because I'm not a fan of the big guy, <laughs> the dinosaur guy. True. I mean, I agree. As a small <laughs> guy, I'm a fan of Marco Stunt, but hey, I'm not just small. Like, I'm just short. I have yeah. size to me. This guy looks like a child. Yeah. And so, I don't know, but I'm just not a fan of the stable of the group. The only one I, I actually could fuck with is Jungle Boy, and I don't feel like he needs the Jurassic Express. No, but I feel like Jungle Boy doesn't try enough. No, he doesn't. Like, I don't think he can he do He has potential, himself. but he has... Yeah, right. He needs that push. Yes. And this guy... What the fuck? Lucha... What's his name? Luchasaurus. Yeah, Luchasaurus. He has this great look for the potential of being something, and it's just none of it is there. Nope. He is not his look whatsoever. <laughs> he is Barney in a Jurassic look. Like... It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's not fun. But my all time favorite, I would have to say, would be The Nation with Owen Hart. It has to be with Owen Hart, though. <laughs> it can't be like Farouk at the Yeah. Movie, no. Yeah. Owen with Owen Hart, that's the one. Oh, Owen. That's the one. How would you. Wait, I did that. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received in the business from who? Um, don't be afraid of anything. And don't take no shit from nobody. Right. Because if you let somebody walk on you one time, they're going to keep on. And I've heard from you before that fear plays a big part in not being, in having difficulties in the ring, yes. so to speak. Why if is that? If you're, if you're afraid of something, like, you could get hurt doing anything in the ring. Like, I've seen people get hurt just getting in the ring. <laughs> it's crazy. It's oh, crazy. like Titus O'Neil? Yes. Sliding under that yes. shit? Yes, prime example. <laughs> so... I mean, I don't know. I doubt he did that out of fear. But <laughs> if you're afraid of something. Straight blooper. Nine times out of ten, you're going to get hurt trying to do something you're scared of. Right. So I would say just don't be afraid of anything. Just think of everything like it looks fun. <laughs> Last but not least, it was just announced, as you said earlier, that this April you guys are going to be facing... WWE Hall of Famers, the Rock and Roll Express, which Hell, is awesome yes. news. How are you yes. feeling about it, and what do you expect from that night? And I have to say, when Chris told me the news, <laughs> I started crying because, like, for those that don't know, the Rock and Roll Express is one of the greatest tag teams of all time. They're actually yeah. way past their prime in their 60s, and they're still fucking going and moving like... For real. Like, never before. So, the Rock and Roll Express has been around since before I was born. And being a, a, a tag team wrestler, yes, we look up to the Rock and Roll Express very much. And we're very honored and excited and all of that. But, at the same time, we have every intention on making the Rock and Roll Express a stepping stone. So after we destroy the Rock and Roll Express, <laughs> yes, uh, hopefully this opens a lot of doors, puts a lot of eyes on us, all of that. Definitely, definitely. I will be in the building. I can't wait. Um, right, So does this mean that you guys are going to go like full throttle, like, you know, uh, y'all going to bring it. In other words, there's no holding back because, you know, it's the Rock and Roll Express and no, they're older. These dudes are 64 years old, but right now, if you watch the Rock and Roll Express, they do doing deathmatch wrestling. <laughs> they're killing each other, doing Canadian Destroyers and Tope Suicidas and shit. <laughs> so, no, I'm not, I'm not taking a light on anybody. No. Nice, nice. 
um i will post the info to this match following this video guys so you guys should definitely join the fun you gotta be there um i just wanted to say thank you for no to the stupid star whiplash for being here and answering questions uh he will be a returning co-host for another definitely. podcast in the future oh yeah and for the the shirt you see me wearing in the video, the Zoltan, the Zoltan comic book tee, you can find that at www.prowrestlingtees.com slash absolware. I will actually, I will attach that to this as well. So thank you guys for tuning in. May the force be with you. <laughs> <laughs>